Hello, geeks, nerds, and fans of all shapes and sizes. This is your friendly neighborhood bearded vet again. Oh, just finished the last of the Hobbit movies. It's not as bad as the second one compared to the book. Let's see. It starts after the dragon. They're in a dragon attack on the city. Um, they do a better job, I believe, in the movie kind of comparing what what happened with in the book um the city gets attacked pretty much destroyed they didn't do the whole bird thing i kind of see why that would be kind of hard to do get the bird to like you know act like it's coming from you know the doors to tell you know the captain and the guards what's going on um they put, you know, they put the cats on the guard of kids. That was never in the book, I don't think. I don't believe he had ever had children. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Um, uh, what else? Uh, the beginning. Um, Smog talks to him. That doesn't happen in the book. He's just raining fire down, and then he gets hit, and he falls in the lake. And drowns. They, and also they had him land on the master, killing the master. That didn't happen in the book. The book, the master lives... And then the people pretty much throw him out. Because, you know, he cared more about treasure and more about his own self life than the people. And, you know, Bard actually killed the dragon. I remember his name this time. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, the dragon gets killed. And then... The elves show up when they're in the city, which is not what happened in the book. In the book, they go to the other side of the lake, and they start trying to find stuff to make tents, trying to figure out, because they, they know winter's coming. They don't have the food or the supplies they need to survive. And then the elves show up, knowing that the dragon would be awakened, and they brought them supplies and food and everything they needed to survive. Um... And then they uh, they march together, the you know the elf guy, and that's when you know later you don't meet, you meet Gondelf, who in the book is already there, you know, cloaked and hooded. When uh, Bilbo steals the the Arkenstone and tries to give it to the people, so they they would prevent war. Like it, they actually did a good job with that in the movie, I think. The way they presented how Bilbo, you know, knew that there would be a war between, you know, everybody. That they didn't stand together. Then the armies attack. But in the book, if you don't know, it's all from Bilbo's point of view. So, as, they're, as the armies are coming together and they're fighting and stuff like that, it only does, like, the very beginning of the fight. The very beginning of the war, and Bilbo gets knocked out. Boom! Gets hit. And he's like, like he kind of does in the movie, but it, they went way more into the battle than the books did. Pretty much, he finally, he wakes up. He's got corpses all around him. Everybody thinks he's, nobody knows he's alive. They can't find him. They're looking through the dead, looking for people who might still be alive. You know, he gets up. Um, he realizes he's alive, but um, a couple people have fallen. Uh, Theoden dies. But he doesn't die like in the movie. In the movie, he like he dies in Bilbo's arms. That doesn't happen in the movie. He he falls in the movie. I mean, in the book, there's no like you know goodbye thing in the in the book. It just like he gets killed in the battle. So there's a couple others of the doors. I think like three or three others, three or four others die in the book. In the movie, they kill off um, him. Hit and the two um, nephews of his die off in the in the thing, but everybody else survives. Which I don't know if that was right. It might have been the ones one the ones that died. I can't remember. But um, the eagles don't show up that I know of in the book because you know Bubbles out, so the whole battle goes by and he's unconscious. <laughs> so he like wakes up and he's like. What happened? They're like, oh, we won. Barely, but we won. And they're like, all right. 
but we lost a lot of people. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> and then he stays in the movie. Pretty much Bilbo just goes home. You know, he's, he says he's going to sneak off. He says goodbye to his door friends and then he leaves with Gondelf. Mm. Excuse me. Mm. Uh, but in the book, that's not what happens. He actually stays quite a while with the dwarves. You know, he, they give him a bunch of tre treasure and other stuff that he tells them he doesn't need. And they, uh, <laughs> yeah, because he didn't really care about the treasure. It was mostly about the, you know, the venture, but they still give him a, like a king's worth of gold and silver and, you know, the mithril chain the shirt to give him. Um, this won't probably be a very long video because. It, it, the last movie wasn't as bad as the middle movie, I don't think. You know, they didn't complete. They did change a lot. They, the Eagles showed up. They threw in the bear dude, barrowed in or barrow in. Um, that wasn't in the book. Like he never showed up in the, in the battle. Uh, that I know, I can't remember. I don't think he did. I think they just threw him in there because he was an interesting character. Um, the whole love story with the woman, female elf, and the, the young dwarf dude was not in the book whatsoever. Legolas wasn't in the book at all. Um, uh, Legolas' father was. And, yeah, so, um, so then they have, in the book, Theodon's actually buried in a tomb with the Arkenstone. Because they believed that he should properly have it, so they just buried it with him. So the Arkenstone's gone. That way it doesn't corrupt anymore. You know, because in the movie they really show where the gold really like possesses him. And the book is not as bad as the movie. The book make makes him like a little bit greedy, but not as intense as the movie makes it. Like he's like turning on his friends, turning on everybody. I don't I don't remember that happening in the book. He only turns on Bilbo when he finds out uh Bilbo gave up the um, Arkenstone. Um, though I do, I do love dwarves, so it was really cool to see all the dwarves fighting an actual battle. I wish they had more of that in the actual Lord of the Rings, but whatever. Um, cause dwarves are freaking cool. I love dwarves. And the dude with the pig, that was awesome. Uh, you know, I don't not hate, I don't hate this movie. I understand what they were doing. I know they can't be perfect with a book because a book is like you could read a book for days. A movie has only what two hours, two three hours to make you, you know, believe their story. Um, I think glaring really issues I had with the last one was just the whole love story. That was ridiculous. They really didn't need that in there. Where she's like, "What do I want this love? Take it from me." And he's like, "Yeah, that's that's real." And I'm like, Ugh. "It was never in a book." It's dumb. Um, did you make you feel though? It definitely brought you know feelings to you. It's like, Jesus Christ!" And, like he gets killed, and she almost dies. And like little saves her. Just, uh, and how the the battle ends with the pale orc was dumb. Pale Orc again it was a fucking uh, not a character in the book whatsoever. They threw that in there because they needed a bad guy, like a main villain to be, you know, as their main bad guy. And, um, hmm. Let's see anything in the battle that really comes to my mind? Um, see, I do all these live, so I don't script anything. So if you're wondering like why my videos are like this, it's because I don't this is on my phone. I don't edit anything. Um if you if you noticed anything, if you know what I'm talking about, and if you notice anything, please put them in the comments. Be like, hey, you missed this. What did you think about this? Cause I love doing that. I love you know, we'll talk. I love talking with people about this stuff. It's I love geeking out, so um Uh, in the book, a lot of the dwarves actually come by 
and hang, they actually all travel back together in the book. You know, they all say goodbye at Bags Inn, the same place they when they all left. And they all come by and they cheer, and then it says in the book that the dwarves constantly stop by all the time to give you know the, eat dinner and have fun with them, and they're they say for you know a lot of the Shire half the time you know, most nights you'll hear singing and dancing and and cheering coming from Bilbo's house every so often <laughs> so that's pretty interesting um supposedly there's Bilbo goes on a lot more adventures than just this because you could tell especially in the movie you could tell like he didn't want to stay when he got there he put everything away and he's like man I kind of want to do some more stuff <laughs> Uh, he goes to Rivendell at the end. They have a, a part where he goes and hang, hangs out at Rivendell for a while before he returns back to the Shire. They didn't put that in there. Um, they didn't put in there that he is an uh, honored guest in the movie with the elves, with the dwarves. So if he ever wanted to go back to you know the Woodland Kingdom, he was perfectly welcome. He was welcome pretty much everywhere. He became like extremely popular with all the main leaders of all these different races um let's see oh when he gets back they're selling off his house they did actually did this in the movie which i was actually i didn't remember they do that in the actual theater i don't remember seeing it but like he gets back to the shire and he's trying to walk up to his home and they're literally selling off all his stuff <laughs> Because they thought he was dead. They're like, oh, you spent almost a year since you disappeared. So we figured you were dead. So we're selling all your crap. It was like, what? <laughs> so they said that he had to, like, he spent weeks bartering to get his stuff back. Sometimes he had to buy it with his own money. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that would suck. Can you imagine getting home from a trip and your house is empty and some dude standing out there freaking bidding away all your crap? And, like, his cousin, like, bought back in. So, that was also funny. My freaking hair is hanging out here. Jesus Christ. I'm going to freaking trim my, look at my beard, clean it up a little bit. Um. So. Anything else is glaring out at me. The whole battle scene was completely not in the book. So, I don't know. I didn't, you know, like. It barely was in the book because he gets knocked out pretty quick. I don't think he sees anybody die. I think he gets knocked out and then everybody dies when he's unconscious. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, yeah. Um, that's all I got right now. That's all I could think of. Yeah. My rating for this one would be as a movie... If you just want to go and see a good fantasy movie, I give it a, I give it a seven out of ten. The only reason I give it a seven is because, eh, I'll give it a little higher. I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight out of ten because I, I actually had fun. You know, you feel things, you actually enjoy them, and they're not bad movies, per se. They are kind of fun fantasy movies. Um, the dwarf battles were fucking cool. In the movies, you know, getting to see the dwarves actually fight. Them running up fucking almost like Spartan shields. Like, <laughs> oh, I was like, dang them. Fucking doors, man. Fucking, I love the, the, his cousin. Uh, Dorling? Dorlin? Dorlin, I believe it's the name. If I got that wrong, you can let me know. Um, he's got this fucking hammer. He's all right in his fucking pig. Just fucking smashing fucking orc heads. I was like, yeah. He's got like the whole fucking, uh dwarf battle mohawk going i was like i love this dwarf oh man <laughs> oh yeah oh and in the, in the movie one of the biggest things is in the movie Ther saradin doesn't go to the battle for like a long time in the book he pretty much goes right away there's no, like, delay. It's like, you're not coming in. His cousin finally gets up to the gate. He's like, hey, let us in. And then you hear the trumpets and the orcs start pouring down. There's no big worms either. In the movie, there's, like, massive worms that come out of the ground. Like, That's not in the book. At all. <laughs> it 
they just come down from the ridges and they come attacking. And the dwarves turn around and the elves turn around like, oh shit! <laughs> and the men turn around and fucking have to go to war. And there's no, I don't think there's a battle in the city. There probably was. It just, fucking Bilbo got knocked out. <laughs> so he doesn't remember any of it. Because I, I, it'd be a very boring movie. I can understand why they did it. Because it'd be a very boring movie. If they're like, hey, there's going to be a massive war. And then Bilbo goes, dunk! And it just goes black. And then he wakes up and there's like corpses everywhere. And he's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> you know, trying to get back to the tent. They're like, oh my god, Bilbo, you're alive! <laughs> we thought you got killed. What the hell happened? Oh, there's a big metal. It's okay. <laughs> I actually think he was invisible when he got knocked out. I think he put the ring on, went invisible, and someone accidentally just, like swiped him, and he's like, "Dunk!" <laughs> just, and then the whole battle went away. And then he woke up, and he's like, "Whoop!" I'm like, "Oh shit, Bilbo, there you are!" <laughs> oh my god. Oh. But yeah, I give the movie an eight out of ten. The book is way better. Um, but I do. I do love dwarves. <laughs> They're in my book. I can't wait to get... I can't wait to flush them out in my book. Even more than... Before. So... That's what I got for you all. So, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for staying with me for this first three-part tr three trilogy. I'll be doing the... Um, next... Maybe tomorrow I can start with the Fellowship of the Ring... There's a lot in the Fellowship of Ring that is not in... I would do the extended versions for the rest of them. I didn't do the extended version Hobbits. I don't know if there is any extended version Hobbit movies. But there is Lord of the Rings extended versions. I'll be doing that versus the book. And even then, I can tell you there's a lot missing. So, from the, but from the movies... Well, from the book to the movies. Um, but you all enjoy... I I enjoyed you know doing this this series with you. I love Lord of the Rings. What it's, it's literally, I think it's my favorite franchise. I think I love Lord of the Rings more than I love Star Wars, and I love Star Wars. And hopefully they don't destroy Lord of the Rings like they did Star Wars and Star Trek and Doctor Who. But yeah, I've been what I'm doing right this second is I'm kind of reading with my my little one. My five-year-old. I'm reading the not this one, this book, the Summoner series. It's kind of cute for now. It's called the Not. This is the first book for this. It's by Taryn Matthew Matthew. Um, we've only read a couple, like the first chapter together. I usually just read it to her when she's going to sleep. That's what I'm gonna do for her, and then I'll give my review on it. Um, I'm going to read, I am reading one of the, I just started the, this book, the children of Harun or yeah, Harun, 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 my own freaking languages. Um, th this is another Tolkien book that dives deeper into some of the lore. I want to, I haven't read this yet and I don't know much about it. So can't wait. I'll definitely do a review on this book. I got a lot of books to read. I got Dune book two to read. I got that to read and that to read. Oh man, I am enjoying these books though. And I'm working on my book still. Can't wait to get it out to you. Hopefully in December. Still hope. I I think we'll have it out by December. If not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but I will have it. I want it out before Christmas or at least before New Year's. If I can get out before Christmas, it'd be awesome. It'd be a great Christmas present. But thank you all for coming. As I said before, please like, sub, sub uh, share. Um, I can't wait to do this next section of what I think about the the core trilogy. And I know I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but uh, thank you all. Stay safe. Be good to each other. Stay healthy. And I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.